Hello Value Investors, thank you for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about app loving. So we're going to talk about what's good about app loving. We're going to talk about one of the things that I am somewhat concerned about. And we're going to talk about its valuation. So let's just jump right in. Um, so the growth rates that they give you the guidance for this year is pretty, pretty strong, right? So they're guiding you that they're going to be growing at approximately 80% for the year, uh, analysts following the stock uh, price uh, suspecting that the company will grow its top line at approximately 87%. This seems quite reasonable given that it's already got two quarters behind it and it's already got, uh, it's growing already clear of uh, triple digits. So on the surface, this is like a very fast growing company, okay? Now, the second thing is that App Loving is actually uh, growing its, its top line through some inorganic growth. Okay, and this is where the plot thickens slightly. Okay, so you can see here that they've made the acquisition of Adjust and Adjust they put down a billion for that acquisition and this has helped uh, its top line grow slightly. Now, if you think of it, uh, at this point in time, the balance sheet only carries approximately uh, seven, um, 600 million of net debt. So it's not a big problem right now. That being said, how does it continue to grow over the next several years when its balance sheet is already carrying some net debt? Yes, uh, it, it can still leverage the balance sheet more, but investors are going to start saying, okay, you know, uh, investors have typically some issue with that. And we'll come to that in a second, right? The other thing that I wanted to highlight is that it's saying that, um, so it has two segments, okay? So it has its business uh, software segment and it has its app segment. The business software segment is really about discoverability of uh, apps. So if when a, a developer wants the apps, uh, apps to surface or he wants help with uh, in-app uh, with monetization, they come to App Loving and App Loving helps them do that. And it's really growing at a rapid rate. You can see here that it's up 256% year over year and that includes the acquisition of Adjust, okay? But you know, it's growing in triple digits. It's very, very compelling. Um, the other side of the segment uh, is the app's revenue and that's really about uh, the, the sales of ad inventory and in-app purchases, okay? So this one is the biggest side of the operation. It accounts for approximately 75% of total revenues and it's growing slightly slower but still a triple digit. So far, so good. Further complicating the story is that apps says to investors, okay, you know, um, we are growing uh, the bottom line uh, strongly. And you can see here for the Q221, it was up 202% year over year on an adjusted EBITDA line. And they're telling investors, okay, we suspect that our cash flows are gonna grow at 30% compounded over the long run. So absolutely amazing. Now, just to further complicate everything here, Apps Loving is priced at approximately eight times next year's revenues. For a company growing in, in mobile gaming at triple digit, that seems really, really cheap, right? And I suspect part of the reason is, yes, the company is not one of the best, biggest followed names in, in right now. That being said, I wanted to just give a, just a point of reference. Let's compare with Salesforce. Salesforce is a company that is notoriously a serial acquirer. And you, you know, you can have different points of view on Salesforce, but I'm just going to say that Salesforce, if you look back over time, investors haven't really given Salesforce what, what some I will call um, a SaaS premium valuation. It has never really traded consistently at 20 times forward sales. And the reason is that investors are quite wary when you're kind of acquiring a Slack or acquiring another big operation. How do you digest that? It's always, you know, there's always kind of, you, you're hiring a team, do you get rid of the old management and who's gonna stick around to kind of drive forward the business? So whenever you acquire, when you're in a acquisition uh, mode, investors can kind of typically skew off that, you know? Um, so it's kind of like, yes, app loving is priced cheaply at eight times next year's revenues, but it may never trade at, let's say, 30 times forward sales. I mean, it, it, it might just trade at around this sort of valuation. On the other side of the equation, you have to consider the fact that even if the multiple stays relatively the same, around eight or even comes down to six, 
if the top line is growing at 100 percent i mean who cares right <laughs> so it's kind of like it's a mixed bag uh, it's not clear cut but uh, yeah i think this is quite an attractive opportunity right here if you want to find out what kind of stocks i'm interested in don't forget to check out deep value returns and you can check out what other people have said on the platform you can check out my reviews and i'm really placed to help you become a better investor and really help you think through and do the due diligence for you on the back end and show you up and give you some high quality actionable investment insights okay see you next time bye bye